Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, and I've promised you this video for quite some time, and it's my everyday luxury jewelry collection. And as the name implies, this is not my entire jewelry collection, even though that's by no means huge either. But the point of this is to show you those pieces that I wear every single day, and how I mix jewelry from the huge luxury designer houses with fine jewelry pieces from smaller brands and local jewelers. I have a go-to yellow gold stack, as well as a go-to white gold silver stack. Also there are sentimental pieces that I wear a lot that are custom made but aren't necessarily everyday pieces so I won't show in this video. For example I have ruby earrings that I inherited from my grandmother and a golden pearl ring that my mom had custom made probably 30 years ago that she handed down to me a few years back. So a few things that you should know about me in order to understand how I wear my jewelry. I have a very busy life. I'm a mom. I have a full-time job career outside of the home. Sometimes I work from home, but oftentimes I'm in my office. I wear my jewelry six to seven days out of the week. However, for me, my jewelry needs to be very easy. I don't want it to require too much thought, and I need the pieces to flow together in a very natural way. And for that reason, I have two very distinct stacks of jewelry. What you're looking at right now is my everyday white gold slash silver stack that probably gets worn at least three or four days out of the week. The other thing that you should know about me is I don't get bored easily. So I wear the same pieces over and over again. I've owned a lot of these pieces for well over a decade and I still enjoy using them. So let's start with this watch. I pretty much wear a watch every single day. I only own two of them and I alternate depending on whether I'm wearing a mostly white gold or yellow gold stack that day. So this is a Cartier tank watch. This is a discontinued model. I got this watch about 10 years ago. This is the large model. It has a very slim profile which makes it perfect for stacking. Next is a custom piece that I've had for 15 to 20 years at this point. It's a white gold and diamond bangle that I got from a local jeweler. There's a little over one carat in diamonds, both round and square, and there are small yellow gold bands throughout. I remember after wearing this for a few months, I went back to the jeweler and had this little chain added because it kept falling falling off, but I've managed to have this for close to two decades now and it's still going strong. And here it is added to the watch. Next is a Tiffany beaded bracelet in silver. I got this as a little commemorative keepsake right after the birth of my daughter, so this is about 11 years old. You may notice that even though it's silver, there isn't much tarnish and that's because I wear this all the time. And here it is added to my stack. So sometimes I'll wear this stack just like this, but sometimes I will add a Hermes Click H bracelet in either the white or the black and looking at them I see that I need to give them a good clean but these click H bracelets I've also had for nine to ten years I also have two of these in yellow gold but I really only wear the palladium at this point and that is my white gold and silver wrist stack now what I love to add to this is my Hermes Echappé ring most often I'll have this ring on my right hand but I just wanted you to see how it looks with this stack so I don't wear many rings but when I want to play around with with fine jewelry rings. These are my options that are very casual. So other than the Hermes ring, I have two other rings that were both gifts and are at least 15 years old at this point. Although I wouldn't wear these three rings on the same hand, I do play around with some combination of these three, and especially on the weekends. I don't love wearing rings to work. You'll notice that they're all white gold and diamonds. That's probably my favorite combination, but I am very much in the market for a gold ring because I only have a couple of gold rings and they're all very ornate so not particularly practical for everyday use. I'm hoping to get the Boucheron cat ring as a more casual everyday type of gold ring. Let's talk earrings and unlike necklaces and bracelets I don't usually match my earrings to my other jewelry and that's because I have such finicky ears that I usually put a pair of earrings in and leave them in for a couple of months at a time. So if I'm wearing all silver jewelry and I have in gold hoops, so be it. I'm not going to change them. I am looking to add some large fun hoop earrings for the summer, but I am very particular about my earrings because I have very bad reactions to costume jewelry. No matter how much I love a fun design, I just can't wear them for more than a couple of hours. So here are the earrings that I typically wear daily and switch them out every couple of months. I have the Cartier Justin Clue single earrings, of which I bought two so that I can wear them as a pair. I have these 
these small white gold and diamond pave hoops that I got as a gift maybe 15 or 16 years ago. Next, these are even smaller hoops, also white gold and diamond, but these diamonds are small little baguettes. Lastly are these white gold and diamond studs that I've had for almost 20 years at this point. I wear these for at least two months out of the year. In the spring and the fall, when I tend to wear cashmere shawls instead of a coat or a jacket, the only problem is they'll get snagged on any kind of hoop earrings, so I wear these instead. Now for these particular earrings, I do have the matching necklace, so let's talk about necklaces. So let's move on to my everyday necklace stack and start with white gold. So here I have my BCA 2020 holiday pendant in the white gold guilloche and a white gold and diamond solitaire necklace that matches those earrings that I showed you previously. And this is the necklace I told you I wanted to replace this chain and get something a bit more substantial because it's constantly getting knotted and tangled. This is not the original necklace for this pendant. That was destroyed a long time ago. This is the replacement that I got from a local jeweler. These look lovely stacked together. Just like my white gold wrist stack, I wear this a solid three to four times a week. So one of my wishlist items was a white gold chain necklace, which I talked about getting from the company Ideal, which I had seen on YouTube and really liked what I saw. So like I told you in my wishlist video, I was planning to order that necklace. The company reached out to me. They said they'd watched some of my other videos and wanted to partner with me. The timing could not be more perfect or organic. I get sent many things and asked to show and recommend things on my channel and it is very rare for me to accept because my thought process is that I just will not recommend anything that I am not willing to pay my own money for. However, with this brand, I had already put an item on my wish list when they reached out to me. So I'm showing you the unboxing and this is totally a me thing. I love their packaging because it's it's not excessive and it's simple and most of it is reusable. Often I don't accept packaging because I really don't like throwing it away. There are these super cool pouches that I can absolutely reuse as catch-alls or travel cases. They throw in a couple of freebies which I love. This super cool mirror which will fit in the smallest bag and this really great quality silk scrunchie. And in addition to the white gold chain necklace that I wanted, they also sent me some incredible pieces. So here you can see the Luna pendant in white gold with diamonds as well as the Layla pendant in yellow gold with diamonds with the solid yellow gold chain. I've been wearing all of my ideal pieces for close to a month now. I've showered with them, worn them to the gym, and that's because it's solid gold. They're not plated, which means I can get many many years of use out of all of these pieces. I'm sure you can see as I've been going through my collection that I keep my jewelry for many years and so I am invest in pieces that will stand the test of time. So here I'm showing you the white gold necklace with the Lena pendant, which are made from sustainable lab-grown diamonds. And hopefully this is coming across on camera, but the diamonds are so beautiful and sparkly in person. The other benefit to Ideal as a brand is that their pieces are modular. So here you can see I'm using their necklace with my diamond pendant. However, I think I'm going to need another one of these necklaces because I really like the way my diamond solitaire, the Lena necklace, and my Van Cleef white gold guilloche necklace look together. I have been wearing this stack so much. What's funny is so many people have asked me about my necklaces recently, but I've had the other two necklaces for many years at this point. The only difference is the Lena necklace, which I think just took my necklace stack to another level, but I love the modular designs, which you can really see in their earrings. I didn't get any of the earrings this time, but I I now have two of their earrings on my wish list. The benefit to the modularity is that if you really like the pendants, you're not obligated to buy the chain. You can just use a chain that you already have. So the ability to mix and match is really nice and the prices are really affordable. So let's talk about my yellow gold necklace stack. Here you can see I have the Van Cleef Vintage Alhambra Mother of Pearl single pendant necklace in yellow gold, along with a Masoma Malachite necklace. One thing to note about the Masoma necklace necklace is that it's plated. It's not solid gold, but I've had it for a few years and it has held up well. And I have my diamond solitaire necklace, which I never take off whether I'm wearing yellow or white gold. I used to wear much more often a Masoma gold coin necklace, which was also vermeil, but the plating started to come off of that gold. So I wear that a lot less often now. What I've added to my stack for the last month is the ideal Layla necklace.
necklace. It is so pretty and delicate. The proportions are perfect for stacking. So this I got in yellow gold. I've been wearing these three stacked recently and it's just super cute together. So thank you so much to Ideal for partnering with me on this video. I'm pretty hard to impress and I'm loving these pieces and I think you will enjoy them. I've linked all of my pieces in the description box. I've also requested a discount code which I'll put up on the screen and in the description box. Let's talk about my mostly yellow gold wrist stack. And just like with my white gold silver stack, there's a bit of mixing of metals here as well. So let's start with my Rolex Datejust 31 millimeters, yellow gold and steel, fluted bezel with a jubilee band. I believe I got this watch in 2011. So I've had it for about 13 years, but this is actually a vintage Rolex. Now, I didn't know it was a vintage Rolex when I bought it because the dealer lied to me and said that it was five to seven years old. So I thought this watch was from maybe 2005, 2007. However, when I took it to be serviced by Rolex, I found out that it's actually a watch from the 80s. So I overpaid by a lot. This is a cautionary tale. If you're buying pre-owned, please do your research because if I had done my research, it would have been very obvious just looking at the band alone that this was a much older watch. That being said, it was about half off retail, but given the age of the watch, I should only have paid about a third of the retail price at that time. Now, 13 years later, it's a great deal, but if I could go back in time, I probably would have just paid full retail given that I had to pay over a thousand dollars to get it serviced anyway. And knowing that the dealer lied to me about the age of the watch, it's a miracle that it was even authentic and had all of the original parts so that Rolex was able to do a full service. Similar to Hermes, they will not service watches that have been repaired by third parties that have used inauthentic replacement parts. But in the end, it worked out. And all in all, this watch has served me well for 13 years plus. And here it is on. Next is a Cartier Justin Clou. I bought this in 2019, so it's almost five years old. This is the full size model, not the thin, and I absolutely love it. Here we are. Here's the Cartier Clash. I have a whole video about discovering this piece for the first time. I got it in 2021 and I am still loving it. This is a beautifully made piece of jewelry. My only hesitancy in buying this was that this is rose gold, which I'm normally not a huge fan of, but this is a very subtle rose gold, unlike other Cartier pieces that are very, very pink. And what my salesperson advised and people online were saying was true. This starts to look more and more yellow over time, which for someone like me, that is fantastic. But if you're into that very pink gold, this may not quite scratch your rose gold itch. And here it is added to my stack. And last up is the Van Cleef & Arpel Vintage Alhambra Yellow Gold Guilche 5 Motif Bracelet. I also got this piece in 2021. I'm so happy that I got a solid gold piece as opposed to one of the stones like Mother of Pearl, Onyx, Malachite. And that's because although I love the Alhambra line, I only really wanted one bracelet. However, I knew if I got the Mother of Pearl, I would want the Onyx and vice versa. But by getting a solid gold piece, it would look great with dark colors or light. My only hesitancy about the Guilche in particular was that many people told me that it scratches easily and the scratches cannot be repaired. So they advised me to go for the hammered yellow gold, which is beautiful as well. But for me, there really was no beauty contest between the hammered and the guilloche. The guilloche sparkles beautifully. Now I'm planning to take all of my Van Cleef pieces back to the store for cleaning because they are very dirty, but even still you can see the sparkle. And the hammered pieces just didn't do it for me in the same way. But I will agree, if you're worried about wear and tear, I think the hammered version is a better option. But I'm at a point with bags and jewelry and clothes, I just just really want to get what I'm drawn to more that I love the most. If it happens to be more durable, great, but I'm not really that fussed about the condition it will be in for my great-grandchild. If it holds up and they love it, that's great. That being said, I've had this since 
2021 and I've worn it a lot and it's still in fabulous condition and I do a lot of typing so it gets bashed up. It's beautiful guys. Maybe I'll do a follow-up video and show you what these pieces look like when they come back from Van Cleef but the guilloche really sparkle. Now I will admit that if I'm in a hurry the guilloche is the bracelet that gets left behind because it's a bit of a faff to get it on but when I do it is such a look. I find that often with pictures especially on Instagram all the pictures are very nicely curated so the pieces are laying flat and perfect but that's not how you would wear them in real life so I wanted you to be able to see them dangle and go up and down on my arm because this is how they would look in real life when worn. So that's my entire everyday jewelry collection. Let me know what you think. I'm curious to know if you have any of these pieces, how have they held up? And I'm also equally curious to know what's on your jewelry wish list. Thanks again to Ideal. I'll have all of my Ideal pieces along with a discount code in the description box below. And thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. That would make my day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.